Why not a tiny home? Many times people ask me, well, why don't I just buy a tiny home? I looked into that when I first started my downsizing process. The number one problem is there is too much restriction on the land. When you buy land, you are buying in a township. That township has a municipality building with an engineering par department that enforces code and rules and regulations around homes and the different way they're built. I'm very familiar with that because I used to own my own electrical contracting business. So I'm familiar with uh, local, state, and uh, federal laws on building things um, and how you have to work with specific towns on specific engineering re requirements. So example, you buy a tiny home, the minimum square footage they wanted in my area was a thousand square foot. A thousand square foot is not a downsized life for me, a single person. I was looking for 500 square foot or less. I only use two, 300 square foot max. So why would I waste over 50% of what I need? I'm only going to be, that's why, I, that's why I ended up moving. That's why I ended up selling my house. I was only using my bedroom, my bathroom, and maybe the kitchen. And I didn't need most of the square footage in that. So you have to build at least a thousand square foot. That's not a tiny home. And then when I went back and forth with the engineering guy, he was a nice guy, I was talking to him, and he go, I go, well, what if I just bought like a big shed or a big, like, like a tiny home, and I just put it on the land, can I do that? And they go, no, 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 you can't just buy a dwelling, a house, a fixture, and put it on the land, you have to dig, and you have to build a foundation in accordance with certain dimensions, so it, it complies with our rules and regulations. They want you fixed. They want you locked. They want the hooks in you. They're not evil, but that is all based around how society works. Societies, township, townships, municipalities, they have to have budgets. They have to have budgets for paved roads, for police departments, for fire departments, for public school systems, for the things, the infrastructure that keeps a community healthy and, and thriving. And that infrastructure needs to have a fixed budget and budgets are based on taxes and taxes are based on the size of the land and the square footage of the home. That all plays a part and that's not evil because infrastructure is good. The electrical grid, all the paved roads, that's part of a growing society. If you see just recently in Puerto Rico, they're struggling with their electrical infrastructure. Now, obviously they're an island, they're, they're, you know, they have different um, variants, different variables on why, but I, I want to be clear that taxes for infrastructure is wisdom. Now, is there a level of waste and is there a level of overregulation? That's certainly, uh, you know, always up for debate and always will be. But I'm not trying to get into that uh, conversation. But I want to say that if you buy a tiny home, that's your number one problem is complying with the rules and regulations of the local township and their code enforcement. You're not going to end up with a tiny home. You're going to end up with a smaller house. And the problem for me, for my personality, is I'm a free bird. I don't want to come back to the same spot every night. There's something in me, and that's what people don't understand. Like I, for me, having to come back to the same spot every day is not what I want at this point in my life. I've had it. And so if I know I don't have that personality, I would then be living a resentful life. And that's where I was at the end of my house. I didn't want to come back to the same space. I had too much waste. And it was like, I'm paying all this. And it wasn't even a financial, mainly it wasn't a financial issue. That was part of it. But the main thing was, I just, I just don't want this anymore. All this stuff I have to take care of that I don't want. So the other thing I'll mention with a tiny house is for the most part, I made a video about is they're a depreciating asset, just like a mobile home, just like an RV. You need a fixed house on a fixed foundation to be an appreciating asset because you're locked in the community. So unless you want to live in the middle of nowhere, where that's the only place where you have less restrictions and you'll maybe find some unrestricted land, then it's not worth it. And if you live in the middle of nowhere, the trade-off is you're not close to amenities. You're an hour or more away from a hospital. You're an hour, a, a hour or more away from a, a Walmart. You're an hour or more away from a public school system or whatever. I mean, you're isolated to a certain extent. And that's why the further you get away from population, the cheaper things get. But that's the price you pay. You don't have a thriving community and a thriving infrastructure. You're, in a, you're by yourself.
And, you know, for some people, they may be the other abnormal part of society where that's what they want. So it takes various different types of people to make the world go round. But I want to be clear. I'm at a small percentage of people that want to live out of their cars, a small percentage of people that may want to live in the middle of nowhere. But the middle of, of the world population wants to have a fixed location. They want to have a safe place they go to every night. They want to have a family. Most people, they want, they're going to need public school systems. They're going to need paved roads, etc. So society has to work around the majority of people and, you know, still be fair to the people on the fringes. But the majority of people, they want a family. They want a fixed location. They want to, in the morning, they want to make pancakes. Uh, after work, they want to come home. They want to put on their slippers. They want to watch their big screen TV. And they want to, you know what I mean, eat a bowl of ice cream at night. Most people do not want to get in their car and move 150 miles every day and piss in their back seat. And most people shouldn't because that's not the life for them. I am not recommending that most people live out of their car. I am also saying, no, don't buy a tiny home for most people. What I would say on average for the average person would just be live a downsized life. Buy the minimum square foot you need for your needs. If everybody's different, have less clothes than you need because people don't have less clothes because people don't use most of the clothes they have. Just less stuff, less, less knickknacks, less square footage, just less. Less is more. That's my on average recommendation. Tiny home is a, it's a scam. It's a scam because you know why it's a scam too? What they don't show you on that TV show is at the end when a person selects the tiny home they want, it's a $50,000 on average tiny home and they end up parking it on their family member's house, on their family member's property or in an RV park. I mean, if you're going to buy something and not even own the land, you, you are then subject to that landowner. You're subject to your family member. You're over there in your little tiny home. You know what I mean? Jerking off in your little tiny home, you know, having sex. Or you're in your little tiny home just looking at a bird. And, and somebody from your family member is like they're holding that over your head that you're on their property. You go at the, you go to their house on their acreage at, during Thanksgiving and they look at and they say something sideways to you while you're eating turkey about you living on their land and and you go back in the house and you're burning up you live, you know it's like you know what I mean? It's like they own you. So either either your family member is going to own you for parking on their land or you're going to be in an RV park and you're not going to be mobile or you're going to be paying a, a municipality for more than you want. If you are single, if you don't have any pets, if you are in good health. So again, very small percentage of people. But for that small percentage of people, don't buy a tiny home. Unless you want to. Do what you want in life and, and do the right thing. Be healthy and positive and productive. But that's why I don't want one. It doesn't make sense for me. It doesn't fit into my desires of life at this point. I want to be mobile. I want flexibility. I don't want to be locked in. And I don't want to pay for more than what I need. And I don't want to have to come back to one fixed location all the time. Freedom of flexibility. So for, for on average, again, most people should downsize. They shouldn't live out of their car. On average, most people, I don't think, should buy a tiny home either. If you're going to, you might as well buy an appreciating asset. Buy a small square foot home in that community, a good public school system, and go from there. Public school system is the main thing that you buy when you buy into a community. That The higher tax rates will be based on the quality of the public school system, and rightfully so. And education is important and all the different infrastructure is important. So it's not against that. Again, we see that in different societies that don't have infrastructure. But I just want to share with you why tiny home is not for me. I always respect that everybody is different and everybody has a different perspective. So just sharing mine and answering some comments I get about that. Wherever you are in whatever home, car, RV, or if you're in tiny home watching this, love and respect. And keep pushing forward.